Well, I'm not in the cave of Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds, and uh, <laughs> but I really uh, enjoy his work uh, quite a bit. But um, you know, I'm Nick Cave, the visual artist. And, well, you know what has always inspired the sounds is, is again just sort of looking at uh, materials. I think that's really is what provokes and creates and gets me sort of energized. I just take bits and fragments of just the experiences and sort of that accumulation then becomes part of of the sort of glorified studio practice. It really comes down to object. It's the object that sets me like on fire. I just get so like overwhelmed. And uh, and who knows when 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 where I will find it. You know, it was uh, in 1992, the Rodney King incident, that really sort of turned my world upside down. And uh, I was so emotionally affected by it. And then I started thinking about myself as a, as a African-American male and started to think about, uh, you know, feeling sort of discarded. So I was in the park one day and uh, sitting there and just happened to you know, look down the ground and, and for some reason I knew that I had to build this piece out of twigs. And so what I built was a sculpture. Uh, it was a, then the day it was a pant and a jacket that was just covered in twigs, but then it was to be mounted on a figure. And then I realized I could actually physically put it on then once I put it on, I could then move in it, and then that then created sound. So that's how Sounds Who came about. I think what defines me is that uh, I'm an artist uh, with civic responsibility. You know, I'm interested in using my work as a vehicle for change. What can I do to sort of, to make f individuals feel that they matter? I was always interested in ideas around performance and movement and and wanted to sort of uh, sort of create these sort of two foundations that then allowed me to where I'm at today bring them both together in my practice. You know I think about you know the role of you know shaman and, and, and the shamanistic sort of spiritual sort of uh, uh, conditions and, and sort of behavior and, and, and power within the context of, of object in, the, in that sort of sense. I'm interested in creating these sort of performance labs where, you know, I bring 40 of my works to a city and then sort of um, employ the city to build the performance piece. Coming from a fiber background, you know, I'm very interested in textiles. So, you know, a lot of the work um, references um, I would say African sort of uh, ceremonial uh, dress and, and costume, looking at Haitian uh, dress, voodoo flags, uh, uh, looking at traditions around carnival. Uh, Trinidad has inspired my work, uh, traveling there and being part of the festivities around carnival. Uh, the Mardi Gras Indians. So I'm always sort of interested in uh, the role of textiles and the role of, of dress. Okay, I'd never heard about Nick Cave as an artist um, or a performance person before I saw the, the exhibit at the, the UCLA Fowler Museum of Cultural History. And that exhibit was put together so fantastically with his sound suits. Um, that I thought that he would, his work and he could actually bring a great deal of excitement here to the University of Memphis and include the academic community um, as well as the, the Memphis community in a, one of his collaborations. You know, the question was, you know, what would you like to do here? So I thought, well, you know, I don't know. Well, you know, I said, let's do a parade. And so, so then the parade has to have a theme. And so, you know, I just sort of came up with heavyweight. And so what, which, what is great about it is that uh, the performance is sort of uh, created uh, 
by working within the university here and creating these teams. There's about 10 different teams. I guess it's just my nature, the, the work that I do, and, and also because uh, the Latino community in the United States has been under attack for a decade or more now, and it's cyclical. And it's become, and it's living in fear uh, in the state of Tennessee with all of the Arizona copycat laws that are being proposed. I've always been involved in my work in a collaborative sort of setting. I've always brought people into it in terms of building it. Uh, our group in particular wanted to look uh, to Memphis and the vital elements that make up Memphis. And we decided that the Mississippi River uh, was really foundational for this city. And also it had a tie with Africa. Our theme was uh, the river Memphis diaspora. The river itself is the mighty Mississippi, which we know is um, rising now. So, you know, so in, in the end, they had their own creative, what can I say, their own creative way. They didn't want to take the easy way out. So that river actually turned out to be, like I said, beyond my greatest and wildest expectations, and it was excellent. Our group presented our ideas to Nick, and um, I would say five children were with us. And throughout the entire meeting, they were drawing sketches for Nick Cave and press, you know, pushing them forward to him. They were just very, very eager to connect with him and to share their work. And I think that was part of Nick's philosophy all along, was that there's a power in coming together to put something on, regardless of the power of what that is as a spectacle for this, for the town and the community to see. My students who, who were able to see it were just totally amazed that it had as much strength as it did, that they didn't expect anything as, as wild or artistic as that. I think that's the thing, is that we have parades, we have like a homecoming parade and stuff like that, but, but they're not they're not, they're not weird, they're not creative, they're not artistic. Mm -hmm. And um, to have one that is, I think, can be kind of infectious. It was amazing. I say it was amazing. It was really fantastic. And in my view, it exceeded my highest expectation. And like Nick always says, it was truly amazing. So, so. I thought it was great. It was amazing. It really was amazing. You know, it's, um, it's just amazing when the camaraderie of everyone starts to pull in and it's just clarity starts to fall into place and then it happens and then you realize that it's bigger than you could possibly ever dream of. I mean, the kids look unbelievable. And just the sound, I mean, everybody's here, everybody's committed. It's all about a celebration, it's all about Memphis. Um, I could not be more excited. Are you okay? You know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to just sort of plain dress up, sort of. <laughs>